there are two sets of prophesying made by the Prophet ﷺ in the scores of statements he made regarding what would unravel before the end of time that stand out in particular as exceptionally powerful. That of material prosperity and that also of increased brutality at the end of time. As for material prosperity, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hour, the final hour will not commence before wealth becomes abundant and overflowing to the point that a man will walk out with the charity due on his wealth and not find anyone in need to accept it from him. And to the point he said, that the lands of Arabia will return to being, they will revert back to a state of meadows and rivers. While acknowledging earlier manifestations of this prophecy, that of unprecedented affluence, current lifestyles in today's first world live in luxuries that surpass 99% of all of recorded human history. Even those of us who are financially struggling enjoy recliners in our homes that are more comfortable and cozier than any ancient royal king's throne. We all enjoy climate controls on our walls. And by and large, we all have access to modes of transport that have shifted month-long painstaking journeys into a few entertaining hours in a flight somewhere. Perhaps even more intriguing is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioning the agricultural transformation of Arabia in the same context as the surplus of wealth and material prosperity. You see, 14 centuries ago, these extensive irrigation methods only made possible recently through the invention of modern irrigation techniques, modern technological apparatuses, these sorts of things were inconceivable. We are actually the very first generations privileged to witness this ecological phenomenon. And a related miracle here is that the Prophet ﷺ was aware and had knowledge that Arabia was at one point in time, meadows and rivers. He said revert back to that state. Recent discoveries actually show us now how the petrified mud of what is known as Arabia's empty quarter, its barren regions, the petrified mud has kept for us accounts of just how lush and green this ecosystem once was before it became an arid desert. This area is actually still replete until today with hippopotamus teeth and buffalo bones and clam shells that were all fossilized thousands of years ago before the area dried up. Also regarding how material prosperity will be a sign of the end times, the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him said, when you start seeing the barefoot naked shepherds of camels competing in the construction of high rise buildings, then await the hour, it's about to commence. Isn't it remarkable to witness how these arid deserts of these same Gulf states, which were downtrodden and deep into poverty just one century ago, are now developing, rather have developed, two of the world's three tallest skyscraper buildings? As for the increase in brutality and killing, this is natural and expected because when greed drives people to see others' wealth as viable, seeing their lives as such becomes the unfortunate, tragic, but expected next step. And lo and behold, our past century has seen atrocities everywhere between modern warfare, between abusive policing, between cycles of genocide, between senseless killing at large domestically and by individuals. We have seen more killing and more carnage and more breaching of the sanctity of life than ever before and it is all traceable to greed. As the experts say, just follow the money trails, follow the selfish interests, everything would become explainable. And in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, this world will not end until the killer no longer knows why he killed, nor the one who was killed knows why he was being killed.
And in the final hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, the hour will not commence until you see knowledge being removed, earthquakes becoming prevalent, time narrowing, turmoil surfacing, and anarchy, namely killing, lots of killing, he said. As for knowledge becoming scarce, one can simply ask what the average Muslim knows about their religion. Or consider the amount of mayhem people often have to navigate to search up on the internet some basic facts due to personalized algorithms which confirm each of our biases and bury unwelcome truths and subject us to marketing campaigns targeting us one time after another. As for the narrowing of time, the ubiquity, the prominence of entertainment around us has time flying between the gizmos and the gadgets and the devices that are in our hands and our pockets and our laps and our homes that are designed and engineered to distract us. And so peace be upon the one who foretold of these times so accurately and guided us to seeing and recognizing his prophethood and the light he came with through the darkness of these days.